Hi there, my name is Aaron Short. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today is Saturday. I had to think about that. October the 30th. Happy Halloween. It's great to be here today. You know, last week I posted a video about Minuendo earplugs and hearing protection in general. And I got some really nice comments on that. Thank you so much for your input with that. I know earplugs are not the most exciting thing to talk about, but I do think they're really important to talk about because if we lose our hearing at the end of the day, then what do we have, right? Nothing. So I said that in the video last week. If you missed that, please go back later on and check that video out. But today I've got an excellent, excellent follow up. Today we have Minuendo here to take your questions, talk about the product themselves and give us even more insight into this topic. So let's bring on our guest. Without further ado, here is Tom Trones. How are you doing, Tom? Hey, hey I'm great. Thanks, for, Thanks having for having me. me. Oh, it's good to see you and thank you for joining me. Now, first of all, where in the world are you right now? Yeah, so, yeah, so uh, we, we as a company, company are based out of, out of Oslo, Oslo Norway. Norway. So, so that's, that's where I am at. at. So this has been my, been my home office, office for the last 18, 18 months. months. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. Excellent. Now, before we get started, I just want to ask the chat if you can hear the sound uh, fine, because I just realized that I hear you coming in on my interface as well. So I just want to ask the chat, is the sound good for both of us? Is there any weirdness or echo? Just let me know in the chat before we get started. I just changed over to a new uh, system, Tom. I got the new Apple um, MacBook Pro that came out and everything is working so great. Ooh. It's working so smoothly now. I love it. But when you have a new system, sometimes when you bring your old interface over, you, you know, some settings get messed up. Oh, he said there is an echo. Okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna sort this out before we get started. Thank you for letting me know I, that. I, I heard, I heard in, the in the intro that the music, music was coming in a double. double. So, so um, right, right. There might be a software setting there. Yeah, I know. I think I know what it is. Um, so I'm gonna fix this and then we're gonna get started. I'm gonna come back later on and delete this part of the video. So. Um, mm -mm -mm. See if this does it. I did this before, but I've just got to remember how. <laughs> All right, can you talk for me? One, two, one, two testing. testing. One, two, one, two three. three. Yeah, you're still coming through. On there. Mm -hmm. I think I did the wrong one. One second. Yeah, monitor is turned on. I'll turn mine off. There we go. I love Apollo stuff, but it's not the most logical. Okay, try that. One, two, testing. One, Yay. two, three. Hey, hey. We, we did it. It's gone. Just confirm for me in the chat, please, that the echo is gone, and then I'll resume. Sorry about that. Hang on, one second. Oh. No, no but th th there's a delay, so we have to give them 10 seconds to hear there's no echo. All right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there isn't, because I don't. before I could see your voice coming through on mine, and if you talk now... Mm. Just talk now. Test, test, one, two. Yeah, now I just see hey, yours. Hey. We should be good. But I just want them to verify in the chat. YouTube has like a 20 second delay. So if we do something and then on, on the screen, it's uh, different. Fixed, yay. Give me a round of applause for fixing that before we get started. <laughs> okay, great. Like I said, I'm gonna cut that out. Let's start again. Hi everyone, my name is Aaron Short. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Really excited to have a follow-up video today about Minuendo, and we're joined by Tom. How are you doing, Tom? It's good to see you today. Hey, good to be here. Excellent. Now, before we get started, where in the world are you right now? I'm based out of Oslo in Norway. Oslo, so Norway. So that's where our company was founded uh, three years ago, yeah. Well, that's great. And what's the time there right now? Uh, it's eight o'clock in the evening on a Saturday night. So okay. happy to spend it with you. <laughs> yeah, that's not too bad, actually. I thought it was later. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> All right. So we're going to put this into like four parts. Okay. I want to start off just learning about you as a person. I love to get to know the company as a per, you know, as people on this, on this channel. So we'll start just hearing about your career and your life. Then we'll go on to your thoughts about hearing protection in general and why musicians should take it seriously. And by the way, I also created a poll in the chat. Let us know if you're currently using hearing protection when you practice or perform. I did a yes or no poll. And then third of all, thirdly, we'll hear about your product in your words and why people should check it out. Uh, I posted my video last week and they can go and watch that later on tonight. 
And then we'll finish up with the Q&A. So make a note of any questions as we go along. At the end, we'll do a Q&A. If you've got any specific questions about hearing protection or um, for Tom about the Minuendo um, lossless earplugs, then I'll present them at the end. So let's get started. I will come over to the chat and say hi to everyone before we begin. We've got David here, came straight in with a joke about hearing. Of course, I knew that was going to happen today. <laughs> Thank you, David. Um, Bernard Smith signing in from Suffolk, UK. Excellent. David is in Columbus, Ohio. I asked everyone to give us a like on their, on their uh, YouTube app. Patsy Smith is in Leyston, England. And then I've got all the stuff about the echo in which I fixed. Marianne is here from the UK. And David said, where is Tom? We just addressed that. And Lee is here. I think Lee's in the UK as well. So we've got more people in uh, Europe and UK time than American time right now. Uh, remember, this video will be available to watch again. David says, yeah, on demand. David says, I have custom molded etomatic earplugs and hate them. Oh, oh etomotic. Etomotic? Let us know why you hate them, David, and we'll talk about that um, at the end of the stream. So let's get started, Tom. So who are you? Where are you from? Where were you born? And what got you into music in the first place? Yeah, so um, I'm half Norwegian, half Scottish. I um, uh, grew up uh, most of my life here in uh, Oslo, started playing piano when I was about seven, and then switched to guitar when uh, I was probably um, 13 or something like that. For some reason that just uh, grabbed most of my attention. And then I went to like a music um, high school slash college here in Oslo um, before I studied music technology uh, in Trondheim. So I lived there for seven years. And uh, um, yeah, throughout my teens, I was uh, more and more getting into uh, I, I kind of transitioned from more of the classical stuff to uh, first rock and then metal, um, then progressive metal. And uh, at the same time, I at school was um, doing a lot of technical live live sound engineering uh, for plays and these kind of things. So I've always liked the intersection between the creative uh, topics and the technical field and that's why I continued on with uh, music technology and there we had uh, focus on production arrangement uh, studio engineering live sound engineering and also creating uh, everything from synthesizers and um, samplers in code so pretty wide range of applications there. And after that, I even wanted to have more technical meat on the bone. And uh, I did a five year masters on uh, like a technical masters in acoustics and electronics and signal processing. So uh, pretty wow. For, for me, it makes sense. Uh, those things go together. But uh, but yeah, it's the interaction between this creative and the, the technical aspects that have driven me a lot along the way. A five-year master's? Yeah, in, in I well, I did at first a bachelor's degree, and in Norway, uh, the master's degree, uh, it, it's, it's like a civil engineering, but not in building as you would use in, in other countries. So then you kind of start from scratch. So oh. that was, hmm. and I did some overlap. So about seven years of uh, university doing uh, acoustics and uh, music technology. Mm. And I can see you like the electric guitar. I'm just looking behind you right there. That's quite an impressive collection you've got. <laughs> yeah. I wish my playing abilities were up to the <laughs> standard of my collection. But uh, yeah, I do enjoy it a lot. What's your favorite of those guitars behind you? Mm, that's like asking, what's your favorite I know, child? <laughs> favorite child. I know. I get that too. Yeah. What's your favorite song? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh, but uh, I do have some favorites. Um, I just got this Stramberg here last week, so I've been mm. playing that a lot. And then I have this um, uh, uh, headless Gucci, guitar, Music Man Majesty. Oh, here, very nice! Which is uh, really versatile um, with the piezo microphones, and it's quite light. And you know, when I do, I do some 
some playing in cover bands and party bands uh, things like that mm. it's, it's just like very versatile i can do yeah. most styles on those so uh, i enjoy that that's a great guitar so you play you play metal now when you play metal live do you use an amplifier or do you use like in-ear monitors because this is a big part of this conversation as well isn't it because that's another route you yeah. can take i don't have too much live experience from the last 10 years it's been mostly like cover bands and not uh, and party music rather than in my youth i played more metal and then it was not at the level where we would have our own monitor mixers and uh, in-ear monitoring wasn't as prevalent in the kind of mid to lower sections of live music as it maybe is today mm. so uh, i guess it was just like the the classic monitoring trying to keep your amp as low on stage as possible and then during the gig cranking it up <laughs> gradually <laughs> like mm. you do yeah i do that um, <laughs> the same guy doesn't <laughs> like it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so just uh, yeah, the, that typical things. Now I'm experimenting a little bit about with uh, in-ear monitoring, but it's um, yeah, I don't have any. I think it, like in this lower level, you're not like a, a true professional band that um, has its own like separate monitor mixer and these kind of things. Then it's kind of an in-between land where you're just experimenting a bit and never mm. getting the full experience of what it could be but uh, yeah well i have an interest in in amplification and the digital products and i have this conversation quite a lot and we should factor this into today's conversation a lot of people now are playing at home with in-ear monitors like we're wearing like you know, i've got these in now and i use these for yeah. streaming and i used to hate them because I didn't used to like that feeling of wearing them, which is why I didn't used to like the feeling of earplugs. So this yeah. whole lockdown thing has kind of made forced me to use new things, and one of those is is these inner monitors. But yeah. at the gigs I play, a lot of the time they don't have the inner, mo inner monitors. They use the wedges on stage, and you have yeah. to take an amp. And that's I, I referenced this in last week's video. That's mm. when you get the danger because that gets yeah. that can get really really loud when you're not controlling the sound yourself if you're controlling the sound yeah. yourself then that's one thing because you can set your amp and the, the monitors a certain volume if you've got a sound engineer and one of the other singers is asking them to keep turning it up and they forget that it's in your monitor as well that's if you've got your own monitor if you're not sharing then you can those i'm just talking from experience i, I said in that last video i said this happened at such an amazing time this was not planned i was contacted um by you guys randomly and i just joined this 10 piece wedding band, whatever it was, mm -hmm. you know, and it was so loud. So that's why I needed that solution. But there is another side to this now where a lot of people are wearing like Apple AirPods, people are doing streaming with in ear monitors and using them on stage as well. But that's another thing you should still be cons considerate of because you might forget that when you're wearing them, that the temptation might be to keep turning those up. And that can be equally as dangerous yeah. as not wearing Actually, anything. Yeah, um, research actually shows just what you're saying that uh, they did a test of uh, measuring the the levels that uh, uh, without in ear monitors and with, and it turns out people adjusted to the exact same levels. Uh, yeah. So, so the idea of that being um, a true hearing protection for musicians is is in practice not uh, uh, at least statistically not the mm. case because it can uh, be worse. Yeah. Uh, yeah you know most people turn it up to the same levels as they would without at least they have um, some control that it won't uh, suddenly explode uh, externally but you do have like every sound check i've been to there has been an uncontrollable feed yeah at yeah, some me point too. me too you know uh uh, cable that's disconnected, um, mm. just something that happens beyond uh, your control if you're setting up and the sound engineers are doing something at the same time. Yeah. There's just always something that happens, and and if that happens in your in ears, you know, then you're screwed. And if you yeah. don't have a hard limiter on your in ears, and I, I don't know if all the you know mid mid to cheap level in ear. Um, transceivers have that so 
yeah, that's a that's a big risk, and I think most people can recognize that feeling of having something on your. It you can happen in a studio with these on. Also, like suddenly, you just have to, you know, yeah, yeah, disconnect, and then you're kind of shot for the day. You kind of get like acoustic yeah. shock almost. Yeah, I mean, we're here to talk about your product, but I want to include that as well because the world is changing. A lot of people are going to in ears. A lot of bands are using in ears, but even those yeah. people can still benefit from this product because even when the DJ comes on after they play their set, that can be yeah. a, a big thing as well. We'll talk. We'll talk more about that stuff in a bit. But what's your personal experience then um, with with wearing earplugs? Like like when I grew up, my band wore them. They all wore them, and they they kind of got me to go get the molded ones. But I always mm. found I was a bit disconnected with those. They were a bit too yeah. much. I would wear them at rock um, concerts, but not on stage myself. As a singer, I found them too isolating. So, yeah. did you find that initially? What 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 was your first experience with earplugs? Mm, I think I relatively early started to use something. You know, I was kind of forced into it. Uh, uh, we were playing in this really small basement at my friend's house and our drummer was just brutal. There was no like finesse. Uh, um, well, he was really good, but uh, but he was like playing with the other end of the drumstick and <laughs> bashing through a wow. cymbal uh, regular. So it was just super loud there. And I had my uh, Marshall two by 12 this far from my ear in order to hear myself. And then there was just like there, there's no way you're not <laughs> wearing earplugs there. So I got I got these custom molded when I was 17, just because of that situation. And I got the 25 dB filter because of that extreme situation. But uh, I I don't think uh, almost ever um, that 25 dB is a good uh, amount of attenuation for a musical setting. Uh, mm. It's it's too much. So uh, I didn't really mind using them uh, these too much. I think they they fit relatively well and uh, they were better than the foam things. That that was I didn't try too much in between. So it went from foam things to from like one dollar to custom molds, uh, which were like two hundred dollars. So uh, <laughs> there was a big jump there. But uh, I'm really happy I I so early made that investment. So because I was. I've been using them a lot, and I'm always the person in, among my friends that shoved toilet paper in my ear at a club. <laughs> I, was or something like that. That. I was just thinking that. I was just thinking that. My friends used to uh, do that. In, if in I the don't pubs. have anything. Yeah. <laughs> How yeah. effective is that to take toilet paper and stick it in your ear? Because some people like it. Some people like it because it's not too isolating, but it lowers the sound a mm. little bit. I think yeah. if you kind of make them a little bit wet and compact them and get them really in there, <laughs> they can be effective for sure. Um, um, but it's, uh, you know, it's a, it's a emergency <laughs> backup, you know, it's, it's yeah. not something to, so, so if you have the option to have something with you or it's not always the case that you can, but, um, yeah, it doesn't um, look good either. Does it? I just got to get some toilet paper for my ears. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not but, very but professional. I, I've, I've always taken that, you know, aesthetic hit <laughs> in those mm. situations because I've never been willing to sacrifice my my hearing even even if it looks stupid. <laughs> you know, I, I never I never really thought about it. When I was in college, which was a long time ago, one of the first things they taught us was they, they brought in a, a person to speak about this topic. And at that time in my early 20s, I, w I wasn't completely disinterested, but I was just a bit, you know, reckless. I was just a bit like, yeah, whatever. I'm, yeah. I'm young. I'm fine. I've got some time. I, I, I did consider it, but not enough to actually wear anything. And then it was at university when my friends were wearing them. I got them because they had them. Didn't really use them that much. And I used to have, I used to do a lot of acoustic shows, but I'd have one speaker behind my right ear. And it wasn't. Mm. There was a point when the the uh, audiologist said that I had slightly less hearing in that ear for that reason, and that wasn't yeah. really even bands. That was more like acoustic shows, which isn't as mm. as loud as like a full on um, rock band. Yeah. But it's interesting to hear that you've always used them. I guess it makes sense because you've studied it and now you're you have a product, so it, it totally makes sense. <laughs> but that's why I did the yeah. poll in the chat. I'm just wondering how many musicians actually 
actually can see, even consider this because I don't. I, yeah. I, I just. I just know the people that I know, right? So I, I find it interesting. I did get a lot of comments on last week's video of people saying, "Yes, this is really important," and I do use uh, earplugs and things like that. So it's been really interesting for me to to talk about this. It really yeah. has. So you've always used them. You've, you've always been careful with your hearing, right? Your whole life. Pretty much, at least uh, compared to my peers. I'm sure there were, like, before I was 17, probably lots of situations where I didn't. Uh, and I can certainly relate to going to bed after a concert and having that, mm. uh, like, temporary tinnitus, that uh, temporary threshold shift, um, and the ringing in your ears. And, and that luckily it's always gone away after a, a day or two, or maybe even mm. when I wake up. But uh, I think. I haven't really been scared of that, but uh, it, it's it been enough to, you know, okay, I can't do this any longer. Um, yeah, so I, I really get that feeling that you, that you are disconnected. Uh, and that's something that we've really tried to do something with uh, our product to, to make it mm. so that it almost feels like nothing when you're wearing it in your ear, both from a comfort point of view, but also from this, you know, you can speak naturally, you can hear what people are saying, that just keeping that communication is is really important. Uh, and if you have to feel that you have to sacrifice a lot in order to protect your hearing, then you're often not going to make that a priority, like you're mm. saying. Mm. Okay, so let's, let's talk about them then. So We've, we've talked about people using toilet paper or just buying, you can buy the cheap earplugs from the pharmacy, you get like, you know, you get like 50 of them for a dollar or something. And they just, yeah. they just basically go in your ear and block out everything. So yeah. tell us in your words, then why, why are these, by the way, I like the way they stick together with the magnet. That's nice. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's <laughs> why most, are these mostly different? for wearing, uh, you know, the magnets really nice ah. uh, when you have the leash on because uh, mm. then you always have them available. Yes. Um, which is good um, because uh, it's it's a miracle that I haven't lost one of these uh, custom molded mm. ones yet because I've lost them at a concert so many times on the floor in pitch yeah. darkness. I've yeah. always been super lucky to pick them up, but uh, we, hear, we hear all the time about people that you lose one plug uh, from their custom molded and that's like a $200, $250 investment, you know, down the drain. <laughs> Um, yeah, people say that to me a lot. You know, when I talk about things like custom in-ear monitors and, and things are expensive, they say, oh, I'm not going to do it. I, I might lose them. And that is something yeah. to factor in because these are under $200. Actually, I, will, I, won't, I won't talk about it too much because it, these things are always changing, but these are on sale right now. And I'll put a link in the chat. These are like around 130 right now. So if, you, if you're interested, you should, you should check them out now. They're on sale for Halloween, I think. But that is something to, to factor in, right? I mean, before we went live, I had to go and find these in the kitchen. If you do lose them at a gig, that is something to to consider. I, I guess the price is an important thing to consider for that reason. But what is the difference? Tell us about the way that you can adjust with the lever here, because that's that's what's yeah. different about these, right? Why? How did you develop this? Why did you develop this? And why do you think this is is the best solution approach to this yeah. uh, problem? So, so we've um, since since even before we started the company, the the technology came from uh, three years of uh, government funded research here in Norway. So it's um, Sintef in Norway is kind of like a Fraunhofer type of research uh, institution, um, and they they figured out how to create this uh, this membrane. It's it's kind of like a secondary eardrum. Uh, but instead of uh, having just a fixed uh, attenuation like you would do in the custom molded earplugs, you can actually adjust it so that you keep a flat frequency response uh, across a variable range. So that's kind of the, the technology that's uh, behind it. And then we, at the same time the technology was developed, there was a lot of interviews with uh, professional musicians in symph the symphonic orchestras uh, around Norway and, and there was a need to have this uh, this adjustability so that uh, and the, and also the stepless ad adjustability so that if you for example uh, uh, were to practice your violin uh, 
on this year uh, for six hours a day. This year might get 110 dB and the other year not so much. So then you would maybe want to increase on that side. Um, on the flip side, at a concert, you might have a, a trumpet coming in from this side and you want to hear yourself better, then you can adjust slightly different. So so the, we, we really had the professional musicians in mind when we were um, specking out the product and, and trying to take something that kind of came from that technology side and trying to, to fulfill a user need rather than just uh, trying to commercialize something that uh, might not really have <laughs> have a big purpose. So so having this adjustability is is really useful. Also for me, when I go to concerts, I maybe I start out in the more open um, modes. Mm -hmm. And then I, w when I get kind of fatigued during the concert, uh, I can close them more and more. Um, and that's also usually in time with uh, a concert will kind of increase in level over time as well. Also the, you know, when you're at a club, they would do that very um uh, they would do that on purpose in order to uh, increase their sales of alcohol you know increase the levels sound levels during really? the night because yeah the the harder it is to have a con conversation people will drink faster <laughs> Who, um, where did you hear that i never heard that before it makes sense um well i don't i don't have any good empirical uh, evidence <laughs> of people doing it on purpose but uh, <laughs> i know that it, it does happen and there is research that that actually shows those um at least correlations uh, i'm not sure about the causations but uh oh. um yeah so it's something to have in mind and something sense. that uh, I I usually you know I benefit from from doing that. I never thought before about doing them differently. I just thought I'd have them the same. I never thought about having one more open and one more closed, depending on like if this size of the stage yeah. is louder. That's I didn't even think about that. That's cool. David said um, a good point. He knows people that leave one in and one out, which seems mm. like it could be a danger. Like not with these, but with regular um, earplugs. A yeah. lot of lot of singers I see do that because they they have one in here for because like, the drums are on this side but they can hear more from yeah. this side. What are the dangers mm. of doing that? And would you recommend that with your product or not? No, I, I wouldn't recommend uh, having one. I mean, having one protected I think is better than having zero protected. Mm. So it's better than nothing. But I can certainly relate to if I had some kind of uh, imbalanced. Uh, listening experience when i afterwards i'm kind of the the brain tries to adjust for it and it mm. uh, you're you're kind of out of whack or the you can feel that one ear is very much more fatigued than the other so obviously that means that you're at much larger risk for hearing damage or tinnitus on the ear that's unprotected um but um yeah i i having slightly different uh, adjustments based on you know your sound exposure um, mm. that's pretty advanced usage that you might do if you're in an orchestra and have a very high awareness around these things so it's kind of uh, not something i would expect from all users but uh, it's nice that it's available and that's kind of why we kept it in the product Right. So with yours, you shouldn't have to do that, right? So if you have the you have them open, there's a drummer on this side. You just close that one, but keep this one open. So yeah. you shouldn't, you shouldn't that, uh, have to do and that. And then in in the open position, you still have a, a decent amount of uh, protection around seven dB, which is a fair bit more open than the the lowest um, filter that you get for the custom modes, which is around nine ten dB on mm. paper. But in practice, it would be more like 14 dB, uh, depending on how you measure it, because these uh, dB numbers uh, just, they are co complex uh, uh, ways of calculating what that single number value should be. And uh, in practice, our 7 dB would be more like a, um, compared to the 14 dB filter um, on, on these. So much more, much more open, um, than than the custom mold um just in so case people haven't seen that, these up that, close I'll just well, show that it. we heard a lot from the acoustic um 
uh, acoustic musicians is that they would like something that just is a, has a, it's like it having a tiny tiny bit of volume down which is 7 db um, is is the the least amount that we could get without uh, making any compromises on the frequency response i just want to show this in case i didn't see my video last week if if not yeah. why didn't you watch it and <laughs> that's uh so seven and 25 close right seven to 25 because i know i know that like the ones you buy at the pharmacy go up to about 33 and you said the lowest you can get on the custom ones is around eight but or, or ten but in practice is like 14. yeah so um jim said something that's a good point is, would these be say, what else are these good for obviously these these are intended for musicians right they're, they're you're pitching them at musicians because yeah. you can adjust them and you're saying yeah. that they're that they're they're going to make things clearer than just sticking regular um, earplugs in but are these also good for other people as well? Like in uh, some, someone mentioned fireworks earlier on and layered machinery. Would you recommend them for yeah. that? Or would you recommend the more like, um, you know, the, the rubber ones that block out even more volume for that? What do you think about that? I think they could fit almost any situation that you'd think of uh, mm -hmm. with some caveats. Uh, so loud machinery, yes. If you have them in the open mode and you're, you're taking some... Uh, or you you can evaluate your noise situation in a good way. So if it's if it's uh, you know 130 dB, uh, then I wouldn't use only our plugs. Maybe our plugs plus some muffs over uh, would be a good situation. If you're uh, practicing on your shooting range, then I wouldn't <laughs> use just our our plugs. Uh, maybe mm -hmm. it would be good enough in the closed mode, but since they have the possibility to be in the open mode. 7, 7 dB is not enough to go practicing shooting. But mm -hmm. if you're, um, so we get a lot of questions about hunting. Can you use them for hunting? Because then you would like to hear, you know, your natural environment very clearly. And you want to pick up those cues and uh, the directionality of those cues. If there's an animal walking somewhere in the forest, that could be great. And having that 7 dB uh, adjustment may be just enough for you to not get hearing damage if you take a shot like a single shot or maybe mm. your friend takes a shot um, so I think uh, it it does uh, require some level of awareness to wear them in some situ situations but yes they can be used for any kind of thing it can be used mm. for for um, if you're working in a bar you want to communicate with your guests yeah. if you if you're a, if you're a dentist and uh, you're uh, <laughs> sensitive to high the high frequency noise uh, if you just want to sleep but i mean there, there's a lot of good sleeping earplugs so maybe i wouldn't buy our earplugs just for that but once you have mm -hmm. them you can use them for anything yeah Mot i've got the yeah I've got the ones that are 33. I don't know as much of a difference. And I do find these very comfortable. I was, you know, when I first got these, I was wearing them all the time around the house. And I didn't really notice I had them in. Over time, wearing these uh, in-ears, they do get a little bit um, painful. Although I guess I'm talking with them in as well. So they're moving around more. But I don't. Mm. I, don't I find these um, quite comfortable. The, it's, it's exactly the point that I, I made that I like about these. The fact that you don't have to c carry two around. So like you said, yeah, extremely layered machinery or fireworks, things like that. You might want these and over the ear um, headphones. Of course, yeah, protectors, of course, that makes sense. But the reason I like these at like a gig, as you said, is you can adjust them. So on stage, you might want the, the lowest amount, but when the DJ comes on, you just do that and you've got the highest amount. And I think that's great. Yeah. Like you said, a bartender, I never even thought about that. When you're in a bar and there's a band playing, you can turn them up, you know, I don't keep, I can't say it the wrong way around, but you can have uh, more sound blocked out when the band's playing and you're standing around watching. And then when the customer comes over, you just do that and you can talk to them. I think that's really, yeah. really clever. You don't, you don't, you don't, you don't have to take them out. And that's really important. Mm. So that, that, I mean, that is, that is the whole point of these really, isn't it? And that's what's so good about them. But you also say that they're lossless. So what do you mean yeah. by that? Yeah. So it's kind of, um, <sighs> yeah, the, the the term lossless usually is uh, connected with um, uh, audio files when 
they are compressed in a manner that don't lose any information like flack. Uh, but we use it in the sense that uh, you don't lose any fidelity or natural um, you know, um, attributes of the sound. You don't lose your hearing. And, uh, you know, if you're wearing the magnet, you're not going to lose them. So it kind of has several meanings for us. Uh, and, uh, and, and, um, since we are a membrane based product, we are able to create this flat frequency response. So, you know, anyone can say that their earplugs are hi-fi and, uh, uh, custom molded ones can say that, uh, with confidence because they are also membrane based and they're kind of the de facto standard in the industry and they do have good sound and uh, uh, we are on par with that but other other earplugs in the range from you know maybe 70 dollars and below are usually not membrane based and will not sound very good they uh, they do have this low pass characteristic that uh, is typical for things that do not have a membrane in them. That's right. You, you hit, you lose some of the high end, right? Which is what a lot of people yes. um, don't, they don't like that when yeah. you lose the high end. I'm just, I'm just looking at my uh, lanyards. I didn't put it on yet. How are you attaching the, the, uh, the lanyard to the actual headphone? Um, it's described in the user guide and it's a, uh, a little bit of a fiddly product so you wouldn't take it on and off on a daily basis mm. uh, but it does uh, the earplugs have this small hole in them so you mm. thread it through and then around like you would a uh, camera uh, mm. leash or a camera lanyard that you have around your hand usually they come with a really small hole that you thread this tiny a little bit flexible uh, thing through so um should be possible to do but uh <laughs> It's a little bit finicky. Okay, I'll do so it later. I'll get it <laughs> on the fly now. <laughs> I'm just looking for pro tips here. It's mm, good though. Yeah. Um, okay, now tell me when they when you get them, they come with a lot of tips. The, these part, this part yeah. here, you're, you're including a lot. Now, why do you include so many? And what yeah. are your suggestions for customers? Because when I saw when I saw all these different ones in there, I was like, oh, where do I even begin? You know, what, have you got any? Yes. any can I, can I, I'll use a pun. Have you got any tips for the tip? Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, I do have <laughs> some tips. So some of the background for ha having this many, I mean, the, we, I don't know of any product that has uh, this amount of tips in it. So it has 11, uh, 11 tips. It has uh, uh, single flange, dual flange, triple flange, silicone in different sizes, and then three sizes of memory foam. And uh, I think a lot of people nowadays have some experience with uh, with having something in their ears. Uh, they might have some a pair of true wireless uh, Bluetooth earplugs, uh, earbuds, and uh, may have some experience that they like the silicone tips or they like the memory foam ones. So usually people gravitate to something that they might have tried before and light. Um, and um, I think for us, it was important to have a very large range so it would fit a lot of people's ears because um, we want to uh, compete with custom molds and uh, having a very high degree of fit for a lot of people is not going to be possible if you just uh, deliver with uh, uh, two types of tips, for example. So, so that was the most important for us that we could uh, compete with the uh, actual feeling of fit with custom molds. And uh, it does get to a point where you have this paradox of choice where, you know, wh where do I even begin? So I, I think having uh, 20 tips would be uh, very wasteful and you wouldn't know where to get started. So hopefully we have managed to balance that kind of quite a bit. And I think you're, if you're going mm. to spend, you know, $150 on a pair of earplugs, uh, you can use 10 minutes, 15 minutes to experiment a little bit and try maybe, maybe two or three of the types uh, you might have an 
uh, a sense of if if you have a large ear canal or a small ear canal and it's also okay to use a big size here and a smaller size here because mm. people aren't as <laughs> symmetrical as they might think and I, I met so many people that think that they have extremely unique ear canals and can't wear earplugs and that's just not the case you know they mm. they might have had a bad experience with some earplugs and then mm -hmm. decided that it's not for them yeah i've been on this journey because i used to use cheap um, amazon in-ear monitors that were really great actually i i tried molded in-ear monitors and i didn't like them at all i think the molds were not done correctly now i use mm. these sure ones and i use the same, same thing they came with different tips i use the foam tips and that's what i'm used to and i think that's yeah. why i went towards the foam tips on these Cause, simply because that's mm. what I'm used to, but I should probably take the time to experiment with the with the different ones. I think in the in the literature, I think you recommend, don't you say that these are the these these are good ones with the three ridges uh, on. Uh, usually, the the long the deeper you are in the ear canal, the flatter the frequency response. Right. Uh, so you you need to have a very good fit for um for it to to dampen the base as much as the membrane does and that's where you get the flattest frequency range mm. uh, if you have a slightly bad uh, worse fit it will uh, let through instead of maybe um, you know uh, the fit starting to decrease under 100 hertz or 200 hertz it will maybe start around 600 hertz so it will the, the lower lower mids and the the kind of high base will suffer a little bit. So depending on if you want to uh, sacrifice comfort for a slightly better frequency response, you can you have that choice. Mm -hmm. I think most people will will um, tend to to choose comfort over yeah. that that's that slight change in in frequency response. Like how how well do you isolate yourself in the in the base in the base frequencies? Okay, so it is important to get the right the right fit because it will affect the overall performance of them. But it's also important to choose tips that are comfortable because you're wearing them for a long yeah. time. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So you just got to try. I, I I would say start with the foam ones and then experiment when you've got yes. time from there. I think medium medium foam is almost like a universal thing. But some mm. um, yeah. So it's a good it's a good place to start. Yeah, definitely. Okay, all right. So what I want to do now is I want to ask um, questions. I want to, first of all, I'll give the result of my poll that I did. I find this stuff really interesting. So so far, it's um, people are saying uh, about forty three percent do use earplugs while performing. So about fifty percent, and that's what I'm finding from the video I made last week. I actually I had a feeling musicians wouldn't be very aware of this, but I think that they are, and I think that's a good mm. thing. I think it's a good yeah. thing, and we had some advice from Jim here. He says, take it from an old fart like me, protect your hearing. You have bad, tin um, is it tinnitus or tinnitus? What do you say? Mm, in the Norwegian, it's tinnitus. <laughs> so here's so, probably tinnitus then, right? <laughs> yeah, I think tinnitus is um, is often, often used, but I think you can say both without looking stupid. Tinnitus. I'll say tinnitus today because you're here. Yeah. I have bad tinnitus and my hearing is really bad. I think as you get older, you lose hearing anyway, right? So anything we can do to help preserve that is important. I was always told that once you get that ringing in your ears, that's like that's damage and your ears don't actually repair themselves. So yeah. you, it's really important to protect them. Um, yeah, I, I, there is there's some uh, new research that is suggesting that that bad hearing or decreased uh, hearing because of old age is actually the rather the accumulated noise that you have exposed your ears to during a lifetime which is kind of interesting that means that there is a chance to 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 maybe not get bad hearing if uh, you know you don't have to feel that i'm gonna get it anyway you know doesn't matter what i do it's gonna mm. come um so I think yeah, for musicians, it's really important because without your hearing, it's hard to do your craft and some people just have to stop. Um, and uh, that's, that's a huge loss. It's, it, you know, it's anyone that loses their hearing, it's a huge loss because it's hard to, 
uh, have communications uh, uh, and uh, listen to your family when you're at, a, at the dim dinner table or go out to a restaurant or it's just really hard to feel like you're fitting in uh, you're kind of mm. alone in your head a little bit that's that's how it's described by many at least so well for, for my thing is i spend hours and my, my my channel is about reviewing gear and what gear is the best and why does this gear not sound right and how do i tweak it and what strings should i use on my guitar you know you can't worry about any of that stuff if you're if your hearing isn't good to start with right because that could be a problem. Someone put a, in the for, in a forum last year. Someone said, "I just up, I just got the best toner for my acoustic guitar ever. I got the best upgrade I ever had." And he said, "I I did it by going get my ears syringed. You know, I had my ears cleaned out, which yeah. was it was it was kind of a joke, but it actually makes a lot of sense, right? Yes. You, without yes, without good hearing, you can't you can't um, worry about everything else. So David's mm. got a good question. He's tried other brands." Um, mm. he's mentioned some other brands that he's tried and he didn't feel they performed as advertised. And he said, mm. and he said later on, what if I buy them and don't like them? I know with, I know with the earplugs mm. and headphones often you can't return them because obviously it's not hygienic. Uh, is there any kind we of have a, policy with these? Yeah, we have a, we have a very liberal return policy. So we have like a 30 day, uh, try and send them back uh, type of thing. Um, okay. depending slightly on, at, on the uh, retailer that you buy it from uh, so there there might be some that don't enforce that policy in the best uh, best ba way but if you if uh, they don't then you could always con contact us and then <laughs> we uh, will you know give that a stamp of approval so try try them for 30 days if you can't get a good fit if you don't like the sound send them back uh, we have a 10 year warranty. If the earplugs themselves should break, then uh, you can um, you can uh, ship them back or you just have to take a picture and we'll ship you new ones. So we're, we're a new player in the market, uh, been only um, in sale for about a year now. So we want to make the threshold to trying our product really mm. low. And we realize that it's uh, it's a chunky investment for a lot of uh, musicians that might be struggling. So, uh, uh, so um, yeah, we want to to make it easy to to at least try, and uh, we're we're very confident in our product. So I think that's great. Uh, I didn't know it's, that. It's it's really good. It's been it's been we have very few returns over the last years, and and uh, so it's not like. <laughs> Uh, from a business point of view, also it it, uh, it does seem to make sense so far. It's it's really good that you're doing that. I didn't realize that, so I just assumed you couldn't return them because you're wearing them. But you're saying if if you really don't like them, you can return them. I know you're working with Soundbrenner. I did a video for them on the um, on their watch a couple of years ago. Yeah. Do they do they have that return policy then? If you buy from Soundbrenner, that you can yes, return. Yes, they them? should. Okay. Yep. And they, like I said earlier, they're currently on sale. So if you're if you're interested in these, and especially if you're in the USA, I would I would check them out. One hundred thirty one dollars right now at sambrenner dot com, and um, I don't I don't have an affiliate link with them, but I'm hoping to set one up for eventually because I do like these. But just jump on that right now if you're interested because that's a really good price. And I didn't realize that you're offering that that um, return policy if they really don't work out either. So that's really nice. I didn't know, also didn't know you have a ten year. Uh, warranty on them either so i think i think you're yeah. doing everything right there it's really it's really really great stuff um a really good question that i was thinking about last week can you buy spare tips so if if the foam on these ones i'm using disintegrates where would i replace yeah. that uh so it should be possible through our uh retailers and um it's also possible to use third third party mm. like um um what are they comply for example or or others as long as uh, the inner dimensions of the tip nozzle is is okay so uh, we have some of those uh, measurements in our fac uh, on our website so worth mm. checking out um yep that's good actually that's another good point because maybe i could get tips for these ones and use the same ones as the plugs so it's the same yeah, yeah. that's good um, Rosanna says her husband Lee gets terrible tin uh, tinnitus from years of working yeah. in engineering with CNC machines. There you go. Yeah. yeah. And he plays acoustic guitar. So that, that's, that's mm. not good. Yeah. Yeah. 
You know, there's things I didn't even think about um, a few weeks ago. I never even thought about things like like the acoustic guitar. The, even an acoustic guitar, like a big Martin Dreadnought played with a heavy pick, can reach levels of like just under 100 decibels. And as part of my video last week, I had my nephew use the DB app on his iPhone. I had him hold, put it here and play his saxophone. He said it gets to like 118 decibels. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there's some people out there that haven't even considered, and I think that's, for me that's the most important thing, just to raise awareness. Some people haven't even considered how loud their instruments are. Like you said, the violin. I didn't even think about it. You think about the violin, it's a small instrument, right? Yeah. And you often don't even plug it in. But I never thought yeah. about the fact it's right next to the ear, so the ear is getting yeah. blasted by that. So yeah, just think think of a, a soloist in a, in an orchestra. That that solo violin fills the room considerably, and it's this close to the player's ear. Um, mm. And uh, w one thing I think uh, most people don't have a good intuition about is. Uh, is it's not only the levels but the amount of time at a certain level so um if you're playing an acoustic instrument for eight hours that that really adds up even though it's not like uh, iron maiden type of uh, mm -hmm. levels to begin with it uh, it's the levels times the amount and that can that's like your dose that you can handle during a day you can have 85 db for eight hours during the day, and and um, then you start being at risk for hearing damage. But if you're at a rock concert at 110 dB, you know that could take minutes before you've used up your daily dose. Okay. And, uh, so it's really important after these stints of uh, high noise, and you might may have this experience from mixing in a studio. You just need to have have some sound breaks during a day you know mixing mm. for 12 hours straight uh, relatively loud or just medium loud but it's constant throughout the day that that just where where's your uh, uh you know the the cells yeah. in your in your cochlea where where's okay. it down and also the um, the nutrition for the cells inside the in your in your ear that they don't get replenished very well so they just need breaks they need the time to so if you've been to rock concert don't listen to music on your way home then you know nothing right right that's a great point it's it's volume and time right so yeah. 10, 10 minutes at a in, in a metal band with you know re, a really loud pa system is equal to four hours of playing your acoustic guitar one day. right yeah right so that's and, and then of course four hours of the metal band will is even more dangerous but yeah i just think a lot I, I really blows my mind like acoustic guitarists i know acoustic guitarists that never plug in talk about problems with their hearing now i think about it if you're playing say four or five hours a day every day with a, a like i said a big martin dreadnought with a with a heavy pick really loud you, you, you're gonna you're gonna cause some damage and we don't even think about that we just think about like everyone in the chat is talking about machinery and things like that's what we think about with hearing loss right yeah. machinery fireworks gunshots yeah. but actually it's it's um it can be anything that adds up to a lot of time thomas moore we we um had that question earlier we were saying these do go up to 125 decibel of reduction in their in the no, 25 in 25 125 in the closed position no, 20, 25 so the attenuation is 25 dB. So if you're oh sorry yeah sorry lower, sorry sorry lower, yeah 25 if 25 dB well set 100 decibels then uh, you would be down at 75 decibels in practice yeah, yeah, which yeah. is okay yeah for a long no, time. No, yeah. I'm thinking about the numbers I was just saying the, with the saxophone and everything. Yeah, sorry, 25 yeah. of, of uh, attenuation, and you can get um, some that go up to around 30. I think they're fine. We we said earlier on. You could use those, and I didn't even think about this with the over-the-ear protectors as well. So that's that's a really yeah. good idea. I didn't even think about that. So yeah, lots of lots of great um, insight today. So um, Tom has been great. I'm going to start to wrap up. All right, David. If they were 125, then you know <laughs> that would be pretty amazing, wouldn't it? <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, Tom, I want to thank you for, for joining me. I want to thank you for bringing these to my attention because, like I said um, in the previous video and today, you know, a lot of people are here to, hit, to hear about guitars and things like that. I know, I know that's um, what, what, what we uh, musicians like to talk about. But 
like we said today, it's really important to protect your hearing. And I think it's been great to um, talk about that on my channel. And I really do like these. And I'm, you know, I'm still in a, in a transitional period myself. Like, I would rather run the sound myself at low volumes and not wear anything, right? That's, yeah. that's the truth of it. But I'm now finding myself sure. in these situations that you actually mentioned at the start of today's stream where I don't have control. I don't have control over it. And the last yeah. gig I played, I had my amp behind me, the drummer behind me, all these people on stage. And there was one point during the show where suddenly the female singer was wailing and you know, it sounded great, but the sound, the mixer had turned the monitor up and it was so loud, it was painful. And I don't even want to think what kind of volumes that was. But there was mm -hmm. me on the stage like, you know, turn it down, turn it down. Because I wasn't wearing these at the time. I wore them, I wore them for the third set because I was like getting used to them. But if I'd yeah. had them in at that point, like we said earlier, I could have literally just done this and it wouldn't have it wouldn't have been a problem. I, mean, I still would have asked him to turn it down, but I wouldn't have been yeah. um you know, pounded by the by that loud sound. So I, I just think this is a really important thing to consider. I think these are great, and I think anyone, anyone watching should try them out. But I did say in last week's video, give it time, right? Don't just don't just use inner monitors or earplugs and expect them just to work immediately. Yeah. Like where, and, my and, my advice was to wear them around the house first of all. Get, and in fact, some of the yeah. people in the comments said the same thing. You know, get used to them before you perform with them. Would you agree with that? I think that's yeah, it's great great advice and. A lot of people try earplugs once and maybe they get a chafing and, and something like that. It's it's like when you play guitar, it's going to hurt <laughs> the first time on your fingers and then you kind of get calluses. It's not that drastic for your ears, but just giving it a little bit of time to work. Yeah, it's not like, uh, you know, it's it's not an allergic reaction or, or something like that. It's just ear needs time. And I know lots of people that wear you know, custom molds all day long. And, but that I can't do that because uh, I'm not, you know, trained up to do it. And, but I can wear uh, our products uh, for maybe three times longer than I can my custom molds. So if I wanted, I could you know, train myself up to wear them for much longer periods of time, but uh, just wearing them through rehearsals and gigs is no problem at all for me, at least. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today and with their comments because um, I, I find it fascinating to read people's comments. So I'll just finish with a few here. Uh, Lee, Lee says, um, and we heard that he's got um, tinnitus from, from the CNC machinery over the years. With playing my guitar, I don't find it too loud when playing myself, but when I'm the other side listening to someone else play, mm -hmm. it's incredibly loud. Yeah, and sometimes it yeah. might even be louder at that side of the guitar. Alan says, that's the first time I've ever heard about a daily dose. That's a good way to put it, yeah. a daily dose. Um, it's 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 a it's a very mathematical thing that is uh, yeah. explained in the literature, but uh, it, yeah. it's not something that most people have a relation to. Yeah, there's some good charts online as well about um, mm. the time and and also relevant uh, relative what they, the sounds are like. David says I've been in that situation that I was talking about where the sound is out of your control. That's really scary, you know, when you're not doing the sound yourself. Uh, he actually quit a band three years ago due to the due to the volume. Mm. Isn't that crazy? That's what I've been thinking about as well. Like, if, if you're a working musician like like I am, and you get asked to join a wedding band, it's not worth joining that band if you're going to lose your hearing, right? So this is a good a, no. good way to avoid that uh, happening. Lee says the daily dose is what companies use to validate hearing loss claims. That's interesting. Yeah. Huh. And uh, Thomas Moore loves the connector wire. Yeah, me too. I didn't even put mine on yet, but uh, that mm. is very cool. And John says, are these mainly meant for performers who use wedges? Yes. Yeah, so yes. Um, we, we talk to a lot of professional musicians and even those who are at a very high level that um, have huge productions around them and always use in-ears on stage, they might uh, do some small bar gigs here and there or go to concerts themselves and rehearsals. Most, most don't use in-ears at rehearsal, maybe at the pre-production phase, but you know, when they're writing or something like that, there's a lot of situations for, for those that are really heavily into in-ear monitoring that still need to have more passive earplugs that, uh, that, you know, in this kind of wedge situation, John mm -hmm. asked about. Look at this. Thomas Moore said, Jack Pearson quit the Allman Brothers because of too loud stage volume. 
Wow. Yeah, crazy, crazy. Okay, well, if you want to, if you want to learn even more about the product, where can they go, Tom? Where, what's your website address for more information? Uh, yep, check out minuendo.com. Minuendo.com. It's that simple. Great. Well, thank you for letting me check these out. I will be using them going forward because I do want to protect my hearing going forward. I, I think it's very important, and I've really enjoyed the conversation with the chat. And if you've got any, if you're watching this in the future and you've got any more thoughts on hearing protection, please put them in the comments below because I just I love reading your experiences. Um, I'm learning stuff from you guys all the time. It's really, really great stuff. So, Tom, thanks for joining me. I'll let you go. And, um, yeah, good luck with your product. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Right. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.